Well, hello and welcome to Knife Delights. It's time for another Two for Tuesday. That easy open tag that all channels are invited to participate in. Just grab a couple of knives and start talking about them. Well, on the table today, we've got a couple of Case Burden Trout Knives, otherwise known as the Fin or the Mini Fin. And I recently did a review on this one. Uh, this is a brand new one. And it is beautiful it's got buffalo horn handle so this is great so I did a full review on that knife and I recently picked up in a pawn shop this case fin or mini fin and it's I believe designated as a M3F and the F standing for fin now, from the case website, this new one is listed as model number 379. It says pattern mini fin and the pattern stamp M3 fin SS. Now, there are some, some differences in these two knives. Of course, this one is much older than this one. This was brand new. This one, according to the tang stamp, from what I could find, was probably made between 1940 and 1965. So I believe these are the same model. They've just changed it over the years just a little bit. As you can see, the the uh, guard is uh, much larger on this one on the left, and the pommel is much larger. Larger. Now there is buffalo handle, so it's going to be a little thicker. But I think even in the stack leather version of this, it's going to be a wider knife. This is looks to be much very very thin really thin they both both do have jimping on there but there is a difference in the blades now they pretty much had the same blade length around three and an eighth inches give or take a little bit and on this old one here it has a trailing point blade and on the new one case is calling this a clip point although it's a very slight clip point and of course there is a difference in the sheath now this is you know the new style of the wraparound sheath by case here it's a very well built uh, sheath I think it would uh, stand up to the test of time this one definitely has look at this one and it's the old Old style, it says Case XX on it. It's got the lines down the front. But you can see, this is a well-built sheath too, heavy duty. we got double layer there on the strap. And it's riveted. And the sheath is in overall, you know, pretty good shape. Now when we look at this tang stamp on here, it just says case, but you see down underneath, um, the metal seems to be, I don't know, what would you call that? I don't know if there is something supposed to be below the case, but right down in there, the metal's kind of roughed up and I can't read anything down in there. So I think it just says case on it, and that's why I believe it's dated from 40 to 65 so just a nice comparison here another fine addition to my little burden trout knife collection yeah they've changed the model over the years this one does need just a little bit of cleanup however so let's uh, clean it up here just a little bit so I'm just gonna take a little bit of rubbing compound this number seven and we'll just kind of clean it up a little bit by hand. No need to use a Dremel on this one, I don't think. It looks pretty nice. It's been slightly used. But I'm happy with the shape it's in. And just another reason why, hit them uh, pawn shops and antique stores. You just never know what you're going to find. Matter of fact, uh, when I bought this, uh, the pawn shop was pretty busy and one of the employees there was like 
can I help you with something? And I said, yeah, I'd like to see, check out a couple of the knives there in your case. And he pulled out the two I wanted to look at. And, of course, this was one of them. And once I saw what I had here, I said, yes, I will definitely take this little one, this little case fix blade. And the guy chuckled and he says, man, I didn't think that knife would last for very long. He says, I was looking at buying it. So, <laughs> good thing I got there when I did. Yeah. Now, pawn shops, along with antique stores, they can be hit and miss. And you can go into a, either one of them at any particular time and there's just nothing there of interest or they don't have any knives at all. And you think, well, this was a bust. But you can go in a month later or six weeks later and all of a sudden there's a whole bunch of knives there. Especially with a pawn shop. You never know when customers are going to bring in a knife for pawn. Or in the antique store, you don't know when the dealers went to a like an estate sale and picked up a whole bunch of them and then added them to their display. So it takes time. You don't always get something good every time you, you hit the stores. But you do just have to kind of be persistent. This is cleaning up pretty good. It's going to take a little bit of time here. But it's starting to clean up. Rub, rub, rub. See that there? It's cleaned up pretty nicely. Just here in a couple minutes. Let's just uh, hit that pommel real quick. And again, you can polish these up as nice as you want. I just like to at least do an initial cleaning here and get the grime and dirt and anything like that off of the knife. can always come back to it later. But you see, just, just with the rubbing compound, how it cleans it up. It doesn't make it shiny, shiny, but... It makes it nice and clean, doesn't it? We're going to have to work on this sheath just a little bit. Oh, yeah. This looks to be stainless steel. Be careful doing this. You don't want to cut yourself. That's for sure. Yeah, see? Just a couple minutes. She looks pretty good. I can always, you know, highly polish it later. Let's take a look at the sheath here. Those rivets could use just a little bit of cleaning. And the snap. Just take a Q-tip here and clean on it a little bit. Clean the rivets up. And then we will take just a little bit of saddle soap and clean the leather off. And then we'll put some conditioner on it. That one's a little stubborn there, ain't it? And let's try this button. See how this button looks. It's just a plain button. It doesn't have case stamped on it. Yeah, she's cleaning off. You always want to check around the snap there. Around this snap. Might be easier this way. Oh yeah, cleaned a whole bunch of stuff off of there, didn't we? Well, yeah, that looks a lot better.
I don't know about you, but I sure enjoy doing this. Like these old vintage knives. Let's see if we can't hit that but uh, that uh, rivet there real quick. Clean it off just a little bit. So I'm filming this on a Monday morning. And yesterday afternoon, I was on with uh, RJ on RJ's Live, 1230 Central every Sunday. And we just had a blast. We were showing our lockback knives and mid-locks. That was a fun, fun show. Just a really fun show. I sure enjoy getting together with everybody and chatting and... Having some fun, a little bit of jocularity. Okay, I've kind of cleaned those off. Again, they're not super shiny, but they're clean now. So let's take let's uh, work on the leather here for just a moment. So saddle soap can pretty much be bought in any farm supply store, and I'm sure you can order it online. Um, I've talked about it in the past where. You got to watch the pH level in any kind of soap that you use. It can be detrimental to leather, but it's a very low pH in the saddle soap. So I don't mind using a little bit of it sparingly. To me, the benefit of getting all the dirt and grime and all the other stuff off of this leather far outweighs any outweighs any potential damage you might have from the from the soap. I guess I wouldn't recommend you using the soap all the time, you know, over and over on it. But to do an initial cleaning before we put some something to condition the leather, I think it's best just to get it all cleaned off. And of course, you only want to use this on the finished side of the leather. You don't want to use it on the rough leather. But it just cleans it up really nice. I think it just cleans it up wonderful. And then, of course, you can just take a clean part of your rag and wipe off any of the excess soap. So look at the difference in the sheath already. Okay, we're going to let that dry and then we'll condition it. So to con condition the leather, I use this uh, conditioner. It's made by LCK Knives, and you can purchase this on Etsy. He has it in this round tin, or he has it in the little stick form also. And it doesn't take a whole lot of it. The nice thing is, is this is uh, food safe, and it's safe on your skin. And so you can just kind of go like that, get a little bit on there. doesn't take a whole lot, and just rub it on here. Just rub it in. Just kind of like that, spread it around. And you can, you know, put two or three layers on if you want. And do like that. Leather is skin, so you got to keep it conditioned. Oh, looky there. I'm quite happy with the condition of this sheath for its age and you can tell it's definitely been carried. You can see it's in pretty good shape. Okay, you can leave it just like that. You don't have to wipe it off, but I like to kind of buff it just a little bit and it gives it a little bit of a sheen. So you can put some on buff a little bit, put another layer on, buff a little bit if you'd like to. And again, there's no like uh, petroleum products or 
petroleum type chemicals in this conditioner pretty much all natural let's see there see the difference in that sheath makes it soft and pliable and if you have any excess of the this conditioner on your hands you want to just wipe them into your hands it won't hurt it a bit so there's that now we got our knife cleaned up I wouldn't say it's polished but it's cleaned so yeah a welcome addition to my bird and trout knife collection say if you'd like to see my entire bird and trout knife collection uh, let me know in the comments I'm starting to get <clears throat> Kind of a pretty good little sub collection of bird and trout knives. I'll be putting a link to my case knife playlist. So make sure and check out my playlist of my case knives. I certainly hope you've enjoyed this video and this peek at these two wonderful bird and trout knives or mini fins. And until next time, have a very delightful day.